this morning as we give your give you our full and undivided attention we pray O oh lord that through the power of the holy spirit you will speak to our hearts not only to our minds may we embrace the message this morning and also and also share it with others may the meditations of our hearts and our thoughts be pleasing to you for you are our rock and redeemer amen So this morning, friends, I want to talk to you about God's admission policy. You know, at some point in our lives, we all have come in contact with them. Institutions, business, and organizations have admission policies, criteriums that people must meet to become part of a certain group or get access to specific events and services. For instance, there are events that are not open to the public, only to businesses and certain people. There are certain places that require specific credentials for people to access. There are businesses that reserve the right of admission. Probably you have experienced it. Landlords who reserve the right to rent to pet owners. Restaurants with a dress code. In their admission process, universities usually look for the candidates with the highest intellectual potential. You know, admission policies are guidelines that specify some qualifying attributes like age and dress codes and many other things, health. And we use those attributes to give access to grant or either deny access to people. And the reason I am talking about mission policies is because I believe a good number of us have been affected by them. We have been either included or excluded because of the many parameters we all are exposed to. And you know, our familiarity with these restrictions lead us leads us to erroneously believe that God has an admission policy similar to the many we have. There are times when we erroneously believe that God is after the smartest and the most talented. That God only blesses those who have it all together. There are times when we wrongly believe that God, God's love is based on our good performance. In other words, we project humans' admission policies onto God. However, I'm here to tell you a different story this morning. Because when we look closely at the biblical narrative, especially the sayings of Jesus, we can arrive to the conclusion that God has a whoever policy. In, in chapter 6 of John, Jesus was teaching the crowds and you read of the master feeding thousands of people and then he told them, I am the bread of life. But one of the things that Jesus said to those folks that day was this. And it's found in John 6, 37. Jesus said to them, whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. Jesus is speaking through John in the book of Revelation says, whoever is thirsty, come. Whoever wishes may have the water of life as a free gift. Whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Whoever acknowledges me before others I will also acknowledge before my father in heaven Jesus said whoever lives by believing in me will never die so as today we reflect on God's word I want you to remember that God has a whoever policy 
I remember when I first came to this church about over two years ago. Shortly after I came to La Porte, I officiated the funeral of Marie Bonnie Hodge. That was my first funeral here. It had only been like 10, 15 days and I had to do the funeral of Bunny. And as I prepared for the funeral, friends, I learned, you know, that she loved the Backstreet, the backstreet Boys. Uh, if you are about my age, you know that when I was a teenager, the Backstreet Boys were a huge thing. How many of you remember the Backstreet Boys? Oh, good. So Marie loved the Backstreet Boys, and the reason I'm talking about this moment is because that's something that we shared together, that love for the music that they made. And many of you remember that you know, vocal group from Orlando, Florida. And the reason I'm bringing this to mind is because one of their most popular songs was As Long As You Love Me. And the chorus of the song says something like this. I don't care who you are, where you're from, don't care what you did, as long as you love me, who you are. And you might be thinking, are you singing that in church? Yes, I am. <laughs> I don't care what you did, as long as you love me. And the reason I'm bringing this to mind, to mind is because I, I wonder if the Backstreet Boys have violated some copyright laws. Because these words, friends, have been spoken for thousands of years. God has been telling humanity throughout the ages, I don't care who you are, where you're from, what you did, I love you and I welcome you. Whoever comes to me, I welcome. Amen. Can you say amen to that? Amen. As long as you come to me, I can work in, with, and through you. As long as you come to me, there is hope. Anyone who comes to me, says God, is granted access without a background check. That's God's whoever policy. A policy that states that regardless of who you are, where you're from, what you've done, you are invited, you are embraced, you are eligible for redemption and a fresh start. You still can be part of God's people because God has a whoever policy. In his book, 316, The Numbers of Hope, Max Lucado expresses that God has indeed a whoever policy. And thinking about God's whoever policy, Lucado writes this. He says, whoever unrolls the welcome mat of heaven to humanity. Whoever invites the world to God. Jesus could so easily narrow the scope, changing whoever into whatever. Whatever Jew believes or whatever woman follows me. But he used no qualifier. The pronoun is wonderfully infinite. After all, who isn't a whoever? The word whoever, slash hammer, racial, racial fences, and dynamites social classes. It bypasses gender borders and surpasses ancient traditions. Whoever makes it clear, God exports His grace worldwide. And for those who attempt to restrict it, Jesus has a word. Whoever. You know, I'm so glad that God welcomes whoever. That's the reason I'm here today. You know, the story is told of a little girl who was in an orphanage. She was unattractive and had behaviors that people considered repulsive. She was disliked and shunned by the other children and was not liked by her teachers. And the head of the institution looked for a reason to send her off to some other place. One afternoon, 
the opportunity came. She was suspected of writing unapproved, illicit notes to someone outside the institution. One of the little girls had just reported, I saw her write, I saw her write a note and hide it on a, on a tree near the stone wall. The superintendent hurried to the tree and found the note. He then passed it silently to his assistant. And the note read, to whoever find this, I love you. You know, someone else also wrote a note and put it on a tree outside a city wall at another place a long time ago. The prophet said that he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that, would, that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by people. There were some who sought to get rid of Jesus. They took him out to Calvary's hill where they crucified him. They nailed him to a tree. But every time someone gets to that tree, they find a note that reads, to whoever find this, I love you. Dear church, Here's what I want to share with you this morning. Never think that you are too lost to be found, too broken to be loved, too shackled to be safe, and to be set free. In God's eyes, there is no person who doesn't qualify for redemption, recovery, and liberation. Always remember, God takes whoever is willing to be taken. God takes you however He finds you. No need to clean up or climb up. Just look up. God's whoever policy has a however benefit. It also features a whenever clause. Whenever you hear God's voice, He welcomes your response. Wherever you are, you are not too far to come home. Always remember, God has a whoever policy, and anybody and everybody qualifies as a whoever. So no status too low, no hour too late, no place too far, however, whenever, whatever, whoever includes you and all human beings forever. So receive his words. Because this is the word of God for all God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us close it in prayer. Almighty God, we are so thankful that you welcome all of us. Whoever is willing to listen to your voice. Reminds us, O oh Lord, that whoever is not only for us, but for the whole world. So help us remind the whole globe that you are after us. That you love us. That you welcome us. That you are a good, good father that is always seeking for us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Go with the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Remember, next week we will be gathering outside again. And um, but now we need help putting things away. All right? So it's time to wake up and get to work, friends. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.